In this video I'm going to demonstrate the manipulation of Sage Line 50 customer data and of course the principles are the same for supplier data as its virtual mirror image of the same records. First we're going to extract some customer data using Post-Trans into Excel and then we're going to amend that data within Excel, copy some records to simulate some additional new records and then we're going to post back only what's new and changed on the spreadsheet. Next, we're going to extend our Post-Trans template to allow us to edit the default nominal code against the customer, uh, the price list that they're actually on, and demonstrate the extraction process with some filtration. Of course, Post-Trans has so much more functionality, such as posting nominal journal stock adjustments, purchase orders, etc. And it can also help you manage bill of material, stock lists, price lists, etc feature rich all the codes in the cells you'll see editing have searching and validation on importation uh, today I'll be demonstrating it with sage line 50 but of course the same functionality will be available for sage line 200 so let's get on with the demo here I am in uh, Excel 2013 and of course post trans will work with all flavors of Excel since Excel 2000 we can see here we have a new post trans toolbar added by post trans so clicking on that, I can see various buttons which uh, access the functionality of Post-Trans. We're just going to hone in on the Import and Extraction button for now. So what I'm going to do, as I said in the intro, is extract some customer data. Now, Post-Trans uses the value in cell A1 to decide whether it's a template for Post-Trans to use and what's its purpose in terms of importing the extraction from SageLine 50. So we have nothing in cell A1. So pressing extract with nothing in there prompts Post-Trans to say, hey, do you want to create a new template? We'll answer yes. And here we can see all those different tag values and their purpose. Customer suppliers, nominal records, all the rest of it. So we're going to select customer. And of course, we could go in and select some already existing templates. Uh, but we're just going to double click on customer. Now you'll see Post-Trans has created the template basic template with some recommended fields in it. Next is displayed a window offering me a training video and more help on the manipulation customization of that template. Let's just cancel that. So as I said cell A1 now contains Sage 50 cust. So Post-Trans knows it's for Sage Line 50 customer importation or extraction of data. So when I press the import or extract button, Post-Trans reads this first row and the tags to denote what data should be pushed or pulled to and from Sage. So let's quickly go through some of these first ones here. This one here, error description, allows Post-Trans to report back any errors or warnings whilst importing data. The second one, CU data, delete, which we could delete the whole column if we didn't want customer, um, other users to fiddle with this, allows us to delete customers. And of course, that obeys all the same rules as Sage Delete, so you can't delete any customers unless they have no data against them. Of course, all customers should have an account code, so it'd be silly, and indeed Post-Trans needs the customer account code to write back to the correct record. And of course, the name. So let's just press the Extract button. And as I said, it will read those tags and it's going to put all the data from row four onwards. So let's press extract. Two options here, add. Well, I'm going to say extract all the data. Oh, and resize the columns after extraction. So let's click X over right. And you can see now it's extracted all the information from Sage 35 records and resize the columns. And we can see we've got a right load of rubbish in here. So let's just edit this record here. Let's just put that in. I don't know quite what happened here. So let's take that out. Now I'm going to press the import button. And Post-Trans is now telling me what defaults uh, a new record would have if I've added some to the spreadsheet. So let's just post that. And you can see there it says updated one record. So if I scroll back to the top, you see it's got updated against it. And now let's re-extract it to just prove that it's updated that record. And there we go, Bob Building Supplies has been corrected. Now, 
as I said, this error description column here allows Post-Trans to report back any errors. It also allows it to write a number in here to enable it to work out what data has changed in the spreadsheet. So these numbers you can ignore, or if you want to force a record to be updated, simply delete that number, and then Post-Trans will re-import that because it just will do. I'm just going to demonstrate something which is quite useful if you're setting up a new system and you want to import some data. And of course, all these data fields, it removes um, hidden characters and all that sort of business. So if you're importing a new system, all that's done for you. Now let's just import that. And again, it shows me the defaults. And we should see record. And we've got a warning now. So it's posted this record. That was the record that we told it to. And now we have a warning, and it's saying here that the CU address line one, which is this one here, is over 60 characters. It's actually 81 characters. So now I could go in and I can edit that and make it correct, re-import it, and our data should be corrected. Let's just extract that. Okay. Now, if I wanted, and I wanted to import some data from a uh, text file, what I could do is decide all the different fields I want and add them to the top, uh, give them to the customer and say they could fill that in. But I'm just, I'm just going to create some new records just to show you creation of new records. Let's just put a seven in there. So they're new. They've now got new um, account codes, and let's import that. So now that's posted two new records. So let's now move on and do some extra things. We said we were going to add uh, the facility to edit department, uh, the price list that a customer is assigned to, and the nominal code we're pushing the sales to. So let's do that simply. Uh, maybe we're not interested in all this, but we'll, we'll leave it all there. Now, these tags on the right, let's just say they're accessible by the tags button. So we can press the tags button. Now, the tags are listed basically in the order you see them in Sage. So if I go to Sage and I display a customer, let's add, we, we want to add the department. So there's the department field and the default nominal code. So that's under miscellaneous, defaults, miscellaneous defaults. So let's just switch back to Excel. So if we scroll down here, we should see, see we've got little headings here and here and here. Now let's just click it. Ah, so there's the default nominal code. There's the override flag. And you can see by double clicking on them, they're being added to the spreadsheet. It's also inserting them. And uh, we want the department. We also want the price list. Now let's look for the price list on here. Oh, that's back up in pricing and discounts. Yes, pricing and discounting. So let's just go up. Oh, yes, there it is. It's in, under pricing and discounting. So everything's pretty easy to find because it's, like I say, it follows a logical order as it does Sage. Now we've added that. Now, it's probably worth pointing out there that we've got a little arrow up at the end there. Now, that's quite significant in post-trans in that it means there's in-cell searching. So a nominal code has a description, obviously, and uh, so does a department and the price list. And when you see me now press extract, we should see all of that data populated. But now we see the description of the nominal code and the fact some of these are overriding. Now, in cell searching. So what does that allow us to do? Well, that allows us to type in here SAL and see all our sales nominal codes. So I could alter that record to sales international, for instance. And then if I'd forgotten the code, I could just press space and tab away, and you can see the whole list. So there we can look up a code. And as you'd expect, uh, if I type in a nominal code, so uh, 402, uh, oh yeah, that's, a, that's the same as code, uh, sorry, 4003. You can see there it's looked up the correct code. So basically there I can type in part of the description uh, if I put a space in and then tab away, I see the whole list. For instance, if I go down here and type five and three and two, you can see it's looking up those values. Or again, we can see the whole list of nominal codes. And of course, we can copy and paste using Excel. So we could change that and that to there. And of course, we can trade change the trader code as well. If we don't want that search to happen, we for some reason we can actually delete that little arrow up and that disables it in that column. So let's just import that data. Again, there goes the defaults. 
and we can see we updated seven records there and that's updated all that information so again we can extract and pull that all out so at present what we've seen is uh, extracting all the information out there now the row 2 allows us to put in filter information so we can filter out values over or under a certain value all that sort of business so for instance we could say I just interest in customers who've got a balance of over 2,000 pound so let's extract that and now we'll see that's limited the list somewhat or in text fields we can go limited asterisk so that's saying asterisk asterisk so anywhere where limited appears in there I want to extract the limited files uh, the customers that are limited and of course you can do the same with nominal code so if I typed in there 4003 we should see those ones that we just edited so effectively um, you know filtration can be used throughout the system too when you're doing your price lists and things you can filter out certain customers etc now a few moments ago we added some extra tags to the sheet let's just reset the sheet somewhat and extract all the data again you can see there there's some buttons with question marks on they are context sensitive help um, so if we were going down here and we were looking for a particular field for a start you can see there that's text and it's eight characters it's uh, the default nominal with a lookup um, so there's a fair amount of description there sometimes you'll find there's a link to a particular blog entry if there's a particular uh, entry of interest regarding that tag but also if I press the button here we can see we'll zip off to our website let's just resize the browser a little bit to fit in the video um, explaining all the tags that are available uh, so this is on our website this is always up to date so and also of course we have training videos etc so I think that about concludes our customer import demonstration video watching this video from YouTube to go to our website simply click on the link in the description below if you're already on our website you can scroll down slightly and below this video you'll probably see some related links to associated articles let's just show you some of the resources on the website switch over here's the home page you can see here we have a series of menus at the top and if you allow them to expand you can see there all the different types of importation or extraction you can use with post trans and sage and also the transactions you can post but importantly there's a training section here if we go to the training section that describes in detail how to alter a post trans template using the tags that we briefly discussed in the demonstration also on the website is a blog which you can subscribe to and I thoroughly recommend that so then you can learn of new functionality and uses of post trans because each of these articles maybe hones in on a particular function a particular tag or a particular way of using the product to do a particular um, job for instance expanding bill of materials on an order code searching protecting templates importing CSV files pricing managing VAT order currency you name it it's all in there uh, and that is easily accessible from the software itself so if I switch back to a template and this one's an order template and I've just got the tag window open here on the right but you'll see as I scroll down this one here um, TL description which is the actual product description actually has a blog article so clicking on there takes me to that blog article and explains in great detail the implications of using that tag and the many different options maybe in system setups alters and behavior of that tag so hopefully that will help also we have uh, the help button itself on the button bar which takes you to kind of a context sensitive help um, and also takes you to the training page which explains how to manipulate and alter that template and in addition to all that of course we have these blue help buttons here which are easily accessible they're also in the setup windows within post trans so again that takes you to a blog article for instance this one's about making the cursor follow a certain path that will then take you to that article and explain how you customize that individual functionality so there I hope you've seen um, many different functions and um, online resources that we provided you to enable you to customize post trans 
to create a template to uh, help you or your customers. So I uh, thank you very much for watching this video.